Hey everybody, Luke Gordon here, and in this video we are talking about horizontal canal BPPV vertigo. If you're not familiar with BPPV, we're talking about those little rocks, those little crystals that get loose in your inner ear and can cause vertigo. Uh, the acronym isn't that important, but I'll post it in the video below if you really want to, you know, ace the test later on. Um, but with horizontal canal BPV, BPPV, excuse me, what we're really talking about is when you're doing positional tests like the um, Dix Hall Pike test, or you're doing the supine roll test, or let's say you just jumped right into treatment and you tried the Epley maneuver, and you notice that your eyes are actually moving side to side. So they're flicking, they're beating from side to side. It's pretty easy to see. Um, it's pretty easy to diagnose. It's the second most common type of uh, positional vertigo that we see. The first most being the posterior canal where your eyes are more like uh, rotating, they're kind of twisting and beating up at the same time. So again, horizontal canal vertigo isn't as common as that other variety where your eyes are twisting, but you definitely want to know that if your eyes are moving from side to side, that you know how to treat it. So when you, when I'm treating it, we're talking about the Gafani maneuver. And in this video, uh, especially, it took me a long time to get here, we're talking about if you're doing the Gafani maneuver, how many times should you do it? How many times should you do it today, tomorrow, the next day, how many times overall should you expect it to work to get you the results you're looking for and how to navigate that process. So sorry it took me a while to get there. Uh, hopefully people are still on the video. Um, it's, it's a sin to, to wait that long to tell people what the video is about. But anyhow, that's what we're talking about. Horizontal canal vertigo. Um, I've got videos on how to diagnose and treat it, so I'm not gonna go into detail on that yet or in this video, but if you already are in position to do the Gafani, how many times should you do it? So first off, you do the Gafani, um, and uh, you've done the supine roll test to determine which type of Gafani to which side you're gonna do. There's basically four options there, so make sure you've watched those videos first. You do the Gafani, you sit back up, or you sit your friend back up, or your spouse back up. Usually what I like to do then is you give them about five minutes off to just rest. Let things kind of settle down, let their nervous system settle down a little bit. Hopefully those crystals did you know, go through the canal, the horizontal canal, and back out the opening where they belong, so they're getting back over to where they belong in the utricle. So give them five minutes just to let everything calm down. And then you're just gonna do the supine roll test again. So again, you lay them on their back, their head is flexed forward 30 degrees, and you're just looking to one side, at least 60 degrees, looking to the other side. So what we're looking for is, first off, this would be great if all of a sudden the supine roll test was negative. So if the roll test is negative, meaning that now they can roll to the right side and roll to the left side, and they're no longer having symptoms of vertigo, and they're no longer having visible eye movements, then you're done. You are done for the day. That's the best case scenario. Doesn't always work that way, uh, where you treat once with the Gafani and then they're fine, but it does happen sometimes. So if that's the case, you are done. And I would say uh, revisit it tomorrow. If the person's completely symptom free, you can still check them with the supine roll tests. And if they're still symptom free and no visual nystagmus with the eyes where they're beating sideways, then you're done. Um, and then you could continue to recheck, you know, periodically in the future, or if symptoms return, then of course you want to recheck. So that's best case scenario. So let's say, uh, not best case scenario. You, you lay, you treat once, give them five minutes rest, lay back down into the supine roll test. Again, head flex 30 degrees and you check. Now, sometimes you're gonna have the same vertigo, the same nystagmus, everything's in the same direction. Let's say it's down beating towards the right when you're on the right side, uh, which would be kind of an easier one to treat. So let's say um, it either didn't change or it got less intense, so it's better. It's less intense now, but it's still there. Okay. No problem. Now you're just going to retreat the same way you treated before with the Gafani, follow that whole procedure, give them five minutes off again, retest again. So you can go through this process. The max that I usually do that in one day is four repetitions of the Gafani total. So that would be treat with the Gafani, five minutes rest, retest with a supine roll test, treat, five minutes rest, retest, four times. Now, for some people, that's too nauseating, it's too much, but usually that's where I kind of cap out because by the fourth time, you either gotten it and they're feeling good or now their whole nervous system is just really hyperactive and they're feeling nauseous and they may have already thrown up on you actually, not on you, sorry. They may have just thrown up in general. Hopefully you have a garbage can nearby, or paper bag. Um, so that's what I do. Um, if the nystagmus, if, this, then I, if that person isn't fully cleared after four repetitions of that, I would check them the next day if possible and do it all over again. 
in the clinic, that depends on when I can get them into the schedule, who's available to treat, things like that. At home, of course, you hopefully can kind of do what you want. So I would do that, and then um, I would just keep going with that kind of model, a maximum of four reps a day for as long as you need to to get it gone, because you just have to fix it with this if you can. So um, there's no easy solution there. Like, oh, if I just do it one more time, we'll be gone. It's hard to say, but I just, my motto or my mantra is just keep treating it until it's gone because this is, this does work. It just takes time sometimes. Okay. The other thing I want to throw in there though, is let's say you treat somebody and you were treating them for like a right-sided down beating nystagmus, but then it switches and it becomes up beating, you know, uh, on the left side, but be up beating towards the right. I'm not trying to confuse you here, but let's just say the nystagmus changes. Now what you want to do is be, be really sure that you know how to interpret those changes. More than likely, it's still on the same ear, but now if it's beating up instead of down, it's changed from one type of uh, nystagmus uh, or vertigo, which we call canalithiasis to cupulolithiasis. And now your version of the Gafani maneuver to treat that has just changed. So again, not trying to confuse you with horizontal canal BPPV, but it just is confusing. So again, make sure you've watched my two videos on that first, which I'll link to the end here on how to diagnose and treat, because that is tricky, much trickier than the classic version that you're gonna use with the Epley. Okay, so that's what I wanted to tell you there. Um, when you do the Gafani treatment, you let them rest the five minutes, you retest. Just make sure that when you retest, you know how to interpret it. And if the uh, direction of the nystagmus changed, you will have to change the Gafani maneuver that you do. Okay, that's confusing. I'll link those videos. Questions, leave them below. I've got some more videos on horizontal canal vertigo as well, so check those out. I'll probably make a video coming up just explaining what is canalithiasis versus cupulolithiasis. Because for some people, I think just the knowledge of what we're actually doing and why we're doing it does help them understand that these things will work. Sometimes it just takes more time, more repetition for them to work. So again, thank you for watching. I hope that helped. Uh, leave a comment, like the video, leave me some words of encouragement, or leave your story below too. Tell people that it does work or that you had to stick with it. Took you this many tries, but you're able to get to it. Uh, leave people some words of encouragement and some stories there that'll help them navigate this because it's no fun. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.